up you guys, it's Connor, and today I'm going to be doing a book review on Lowball, edited by George R. R. Martin and Melinda M. Snodgrass. Lowball is the 22nd book in the Wild Card series, which is a very long, obviously, ongoing series that follows basically superheroes and supervillains that live in the real world. What happened was that aliens sent a virus to Earth trying to kill off people, and so people did die from this virus, but some people fought it off and they're just normal humans, they're called gnats. Then there are people that were affected and changed by the virus. There are people called aces and those people pass as regular humans. They don't have any physical deformities or anything like that and they have superpowers so being able to control the earth or fly or you know do other things like that. Then there's people that were physically mutated with the virus and so they're called jokers. The guy on the cover of the book has a snake tail so he would be considered a joker because he can't pass as a normal human. A lot of jokers end up living in this place called Joker Town because they just all gather together and it's safer in theory to be together than just try to live with everyone else and some people do live with everyone else but a lot of people choose to live in Joker Town. I was told to jump into the wild card series here because it's the first book in the most recent set of books. I've been told that the storylines and the arcs are really three books long, so the 22nd book would work because it'd be the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And I can also say that I didn't have any problems jumping into the series here. You can tell that there's some backstory and some history of this world that I don't know and I'm missing out on, but it didn't affect my experience while reading the novel and I still understood everything that was happening. In this one, Jokers have started to go missing and it starts off with Jokers that no one cares about, like homeless ones or ones that people aren't friends with or like or whatever and then as the novel goes on more and more people start to go missing and people are trying to find them and rescue the missing jokers and find out who's taking them and why. This is also a mosaic novel so there are a bunch of different authors that write different storylines within this story that weave together and all create one cohesive story and some are told all in one big chunk and other ones are broken up and placed in between other stories and so no going in that there are different authors authors writing this book and each storyline is written by someone different. As usual with my book reviews, I'm going to go through my pros, go through my cons, give you my rating, and be done. My first pro is something that I kind of touched on earlier, is that I think that the different stories and the writers all worked really well together. I went from one story, one narrative, to another one very easily. I didn't really get pushed out of the story ever, and I just continued to devour this book so quickly. <laughs> Some of the people that helped write this book were David D. Levine, which wrote Arabella of Mars, and Carrie Vaughn. I recognize her name, but I have I haven't read anything by her yet, but there are a bunch of different people and Melinda M. Snodgrass also has a storyline in here. And with the storylines all working well together, I really liked that they all kind of start off a little bit separate and then you get used to the characters and then they start to weave together, especially towards the latter half of the novel. You start to see the full picture and you're like, oh wow, okay. My next pro is just going to be that I love the whole concept of this world and I love that it is kind of doing something where the Jokers are pretty much outcasts and people don't really associate with them as much. It kind of reminds me of X-Men, how people don't like the mutants and they treat them poorly and it explores being a part of that minority, being the ones that are outcasts that people don't like, as well as the people within that minority that are deemed okay or that people do like. So it's just an interesting cultural setup that I enjoyed reading about. Obviously I love comic books and science fiction and fantasy so I loved all the powers and I really loved how different all the powers are and I'm assuming that there's a lot more that have happened in the past books but I really like the ones that were in here. For instance again Marcus on the front has a snake tail. This one guy has like squid tentacles on his face. One woman all all over her torso has extra nipples and with that this book is adult there are sexy times that happen in there but I've heard that some of the previous books focus more on the sexy times and this one it wasn't as big of a focus but it's still there so yeah I just really liked the powers and abilities that these different people had I also like that not everyone was safe obviously people are being kidnapped and they're being kidnapped for a reason and there are some dangerous situations that these people are getting themselves involved in and in those situations not everyone would live in the real world so I appreciated that it was similar to that where not every joker and not every ace is safe and you can die in these books. And also I just really liked that it was a comic book style feel. The pacing of the book is very very fast. You get through it so quickly and just action is happening all the time. Just like what is gonna happen next? Oh my gosh I need the next book. It had that kind of feeling. 
Now I'm going to talk about some of my cons. My first con was that I didn't expect the book to end like that. It's a very uncathartic ending and I do like to have some amount of catharsis when I finish a novel, especially one that's not super short. So I wish there was a couple of things that were kind of tied up. There aren't. <laughs> I need to read the next book. And my only other con that I really had for this is going to be that I didn't like when the stories were told all in one chunk, which happens I think twice in this book. I liked it better when the stories were broken up throughout the course of the novel. And I know that that plot wise it made sense to have them all in one chunk but it just seemed very daunting when I wanted to read a section of the book to get to one of those really big parts and be like oh I've got to read like 80 pages to be done with this section so I wished that those had been broken up a little bit more but obviously I still enjoyed the story. So overall I really enjoyed this novel. I've been really wanting to get into the wild card series for a while now. It is a bit intimidating so after finding out that I could just jump in with this one it made it a lot easier. Better. So I ended up giving this book four stars. I'm very much interested in continuing on with the story as well as going back and reading some of the first vol uh, volumes, <laughs> reading some of the first books in the series to get more of the backstory. But overall, if you're looking for a very fast paced, action packed superhero story, this is a really good one. So that's going to be my review on Lowball, edited by George R. R. Martin and Melinda M. Snodgrass. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below if you've read the Wild Card series. What did you think about Lowball? How does it compare to the rest of the series? If you have any superhero books that you want to recommend to me, leave those down in the comments as well. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!